I'm always inspired to talk about an interesting concept today. My concept is successful people know how to phone a friend. They know how to phone a friend. If you've ever watched that show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You start out and you win like a dollar and it doubles to two dollars. I don't really know the detail. Then the two dollars becomes four, eight. It really doesn't matter. And there are questions, you know, like what are the color of your eyes? You know, they're really easy questions. Then it gets to maybe 1,600, 30, you know, and, and the questions get more challenging. So, so when the stakes get really high in this show, they give you some lifelines. You know, they give you some lifelines. And one of the lifelines, if you've never seen the show, is you get to phone a friend, which means... If they ask, you have to keep asking the, answering the questions. The minute you get a question wrong, you lose everything. It's all or nothing on every question. And so when it gets to like, I want to say $128,000, $256,000, half a million dollars, the last question, you get a million dollars if you don't know the show. And so, so every question is multiple choice. They give you four possible answers. And I would suggest that every question in our life, we have four possible answers. Every challenge in our life, every decision we have to make in our life, we metaphorically have four answers to give the universe, to give God, to give the situation, and to give ourselves. That's yes, no, not yet, and denial. Whatever your challenge is, if you come to me for counseling, I'm going to be like, well, Reverend Tim, you got four choices. Yes, no, not yet, or just stay in denial. Those are every situation, a move, a not move, financial, health, relationship. And so, so this phone a friend allows the contestant to call a friend for advice on the question. And so successful people know there are times in their life when they have to reach out to a friend for advice, for counsel, for correction. Okay? Now, now, now remember, they don't just reach out to anyone. They don't just... Jesus had 12 apostles. You know that, right? Jesus had 12 apostles. But we see during crucial times, he only relied on three. Okay? He relied on three, which we understand is the brothers... You know, James and John and Peter. And we understand that every apostle represents a quality of God in us. Every understand, that's how we understand the Bible. And so Peter represents faith. James represents discernment. And John represents love. So every time there's a major decision in our life that we need to make, the, 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 the place of God in us we should go to, is where is our faith, where is our discernment, and where is our love? We're talking about discernment is intelligent love, intelligent faith. Discernment, you know, is not thinking. It, it's, it's weighing and, and observing and taking a step back. Discernment involves actually more listening to God than talking to God. And so these apostles, these powers, these qualities of God are always available to us when we choose to call them out. They witnessed the transfiguration, which was a great moment in the life of Jesus. So, so these qualities of God, faith, discernment, and love, they're available in our happiest, greatest times in our life. The days that we plan, the days that we graduate, the days that we find someone, these qualities of God are there. They also accompanied Jesus to the garden at Gethsemane. And so faith, discernment, and love in us, remember this is God in us, are there for those days that fall apart. They're there for the days we don't know what to do. They're there for the hopelessness that I described a few weeks ago. But, but Jesus alone shows us successful people, even Jesus himself, call a friend to stand in the fire with him, 
and also call that same friend to stand in life celebrations. We know that David, the great king, he had Nathan and Jonathan he could go to. Very different people offering him very different support. One, Nathan always offered him discernment, questioning. Jonathan always offered him love. We know Samuel, Samuel, the great king of Israel, was mentored by Eli. So now we see another level of friendship, which is mentorship. Friends aren't there to always just tell us what we want. Sometimes they're there to reflect what we don't want to hear because they're our friend. We know that Naomi had Ruth, who stuck by her, stuck by her in a time when everyone else walked away. You see, through the Bible, we see that friendship is important. But I share with you my definition of friend, and I believe it comes from, from dictionary.com or, or Webster's. A friend is someone who supports us. That's my definition of a friend. And now that, I'm going to add the spirituality. It's someone who supports us in seeing God in a moment we not, might not be able to. And so in this phone a friend lifeline, there are three friends available. They have to be predetermined. You have to tell them who these people are in your life before you answer the questions, before you're a contestant on the show. And what would we think these three friends would be based on? Well, if I have a choice of winning a million dollars and I get to pick three people in my life who are going to be there to help me with a question when I'm stumped, I would base it on trust, knowledge, and experience. I'd rather they know a little bit about everything than just be a focused, you know, person who's an expert in one tiny field. I need to trust them. I need to trust them not only to give me the answer, but I need to trust them to say, I don't know if they don't know the answer. And so these contestants get to a question, let's say it's the half million dollar question, when they say, I'm going to use the phone a friend lifeline, the game stops. Do you understand time stops when we declare it so for us to take a breath? I shared last week how, how we can bring God or spirit into any situation by choosing to take a deep breath. We have the power to stop the train wreck when we so determine it. it the train still may wreck, but we won't be on it. <laughs> All right? We have the power. And so just like this game, when our mind is racing in that, that tornado and we don't know what to do, we have the power to stop the emotions, to stop the whirlwind, to stop the lesser thoughts and simply take a breath. The contestant then shares, I'm going to, you know, use friend A. And they call the friend and they read the question. And it, it, the, they can talk. There's no time limit at that point of it. But once the contestant gives the answer, once the friend gives the answer, then the person playing the game has a limited amount of time. My suggestion today is we can use this same principle in our lives to create success that we can walk that talk in the meditation and the video we just saw by surrounding ourselves with people who already walk that talk, that we can choose people in our lives who are wiser and more experienced to see God in us, that there are times we can seek advice or counsel for someone who has already walked the path that we're walking today. You see, when I say a friend, this friend metaphorically, metaphysically, like we saw with Ruth, like we saw with Jonathan and Nathan, like we saw with Eli from the Bible, they're not just somebody that tells us what we want to hear. This friend, this could be a life coach. It could be someone we know for our whole lives. It can be a therapist. It can be a pastor. This friend could be a trainer at the gym. It's somebody who builds our confidence and only sees greatness in us 
and won't abandon us. See, friends don't help us out only when there's the celebration. The real definition of a friend, as Reverend Tim has taught me, is someone who stands in the fire with you when you're wrong and not right. It's easy to stand and celebrate with someone when, when everything's coming up roses. And it's easy to stand and celebrate someone on the day they get their, their master's degree or law degree or doctorate degree. But, but it's challenging to stand with someone through the dissertation process. It's challenging to stand with someone when they failed the test. It's challenging to stand with someone and know they could have been done, done better. But that's the definition of the friends that we see in the Bible. That's the definition of the friend that God is in us. Remember, we can always call God. We can always call the Spirit of God in us. And, and, you know, I once heard, you know, I once heard, and I think it was from Joel Osteen or T.D. Jakes. I'm not really sure, but I once heard, if you're the smartest person in your group of friends, you need some new friends. Because we always want people to stretch, like Isaiah, to stretch the tent, to sh- like Jabez, the prayer of Jabez. God, enlarge my territory. The way to enlarge my consciousness, my wisdom, my territory is to hang out with people who are larger than me and, and to seek advice from people who, who, who have been there, done that, have the scars and the t-shirt to prove it. And too often, too often, there's this ego inside of us that surrounds us with secure people that keep us in our comfort zone. We don't do it consciously, but surrounds us with people that make us feel good all the time and tell us it's going to be okay and, and tell us, you know, it's, it's mediocre, but at least it's mediocre. You know, and sometimes we need to heal that, but not, not, not who we are. Not this church. I know most of you. I know your dreams. I read those prayer requests. We are the people in this city, in Hollywood, in Broward, in Florida, in the United States, who can turn around and lift this country up if we just leave these doors and walk our talk. If we just stand up for what it means to be an American, patriotic, unity. If we just stop this petty bickering and acknowledge the power and the presence of God in every man and woman and just move forward. You see, see, it's it's about phoning a friend when we need the friend, not phoning the friend when we just want to share some gossip, not phoning the friend when we want them to pat us on the back. It's about phoning the friend, the therapist, the counselor, the trainer, the pastor, the coach, you know, God, the Holy Spirit, Christ. When we are seeking guidance, these are the most important, important moments of your life. Did you ever go on a trip somewhere and have the GPS drop or fail and you have no idea where you are because you never printed out or asked for the directions? I mean, that has happened to me. And I've been like, I remember once the GPS died, it was like, like the, the mountains of North Carolina. And I'm like, well, now what do I do? You know, and there was like exits and roads, and I was like, okay, God, you know. And, and, and so, you know, too often what we do, too often what I used to do, I'll just, I won't say we, I'll just say I used to do. Too often I used to get my, my list. Okay, I need bread, I need eggs, I need milk, and I need sugar. And then, you know what I'd do? I'd walk into Home Depot and say, Excuse me, where is the aisle for bread? And they'd say, we don't sell bread. We're a hardware store. And I'd say, where is the aisle for milk? We don't sell milk. We're a hardware store. Eggs, sugar, no, sir. We're a hardware store. And then I'd say, okay, and I'd walk into Publix, and I'd be, excuse me, I need some tools, a drill, a lawn edger, and paint. And they'd say, we don't sell that. We sell food. Did you see my point? Don't go to Home Depot if you're looking for a loaf of bread. Don't go to Publix if you're looking for a gallon of paint. Don't go to the friend who has had six divorces and is in their seventh relationship for advice about what to do in your relationship, right? 
But if they got a great portfolio and you have a financial question, go to Home Depot and pick yourself up some paint. You want relationship advice? Go to a person who has been in a committed relationship for 17 years. You know, you want music advice? Call Reverend Tim. If you want advice about music, do not call me, please. Okay, unless you want to be really bad, off-key, no tempo, and no melody. But if you want advice about pastoring, you come to me. Do you see what I'm saying? Will Smith, Will Smith said something wonderful. He says, don't chase people. Be yourself, do your own thing, and work hard. The right people, the ones who really belong in your life, will come to you and they will stay. When we're open and receptive to God, we don't even have to choose the people to phone. God puts them in our life and we know it. When we See, see this is important. You don't know why this is important, church? This is important because the people we allow to the left and our right influence our dreams and they influence our life. Jesus said, don't cast your pearls to swine or dogs, for they will just maul and devour them. Do not cast your dreams to negative, pessimistic people in your life, for they will just maul and devour your dreams. Notice I I haven't touched the subject of family. (laughs) And there's a reason. Because in the 17th chapter, in the 17th verse of Proverbs, Solomon says, a friend loveth at all time, but a brother is born for adversity. Okay? So, so, so our family has their role, but I would just suggest that influence is a process that we give to people with a lot of discernment of our life. Influence is a process we share with people because of the impact it has on our life. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. And when salt has lost its flavor, it is no good to be trampled on. You know, and so we are here to lift up our life, to flavor it, to flavor our lives. And, and, and we allow other people to spice us up or not. And we don't have to take anyone's opinion. And the way to protect ourselves is decide before the game starts, before I play, before they ask me the $1 question, who am I going to phone when I get to a half million dollars? Who am I going to trust? Who has integrity? Who has the wisdom and the life experience when I'm at my wit's end? I doubt if we're really using these criteria, like Jesus, I doubt that any one of us need to come up with more than three people in our life that are these quality of friends. Successful people, which we're talking about, have quality people in their life that guide them in those crossroad and detour moments. Successful people plan who these people are and know when they need them, they will be there. You know, successful people embrace the wisdom of God because we understand, church, God works through people in our life. The Holy Spirit is the activity of God in our life, not only in our life, but in Reverend Tim's life, in Janie's life, in Anthony's life, in Frederica's life. And so these people, because they're close, they're members, that they have influence. But not everybody should have the same amount of influence in our life. Not everybody merits or deserves input into the decisions we made. And ultimately, we have the sons of thunder, James and John, discernment and love combined with faith. And when we stand on the rock of faith and discernment and love, and we surround ourselves with people who have what we want, who are the inner core three, we have the strength to separate the other nine and say, this is not for you. Thomas the doubter, this is not for you. Andrew, in your strength, 
this is not for you. I am going to sit in the presence of God, the discernment and the faith and the love of God in this decision because I am inspired to be successful. I have planned on success. I have planned on God. I have taken action. I have used my intellect. I've let go of my resentment. And God is going to bring me in this moment, in this tragedy or in this triumph, one step closer to the vision that God has placed in my life, church. This is how successful people wake up in the morning. This is how they think. This is how they respond. And this is how they live. I invite you to do the same. And so it is. And it shall be. God bless you. God bless you. God bless every one of you successful people. Amen.